One of the questions I get asked the most is what do deer eat in big woods? A better question would be what don't they eat? If it's green or growing, they're eating it. In this video, let's take a closer look at food and its relationship to hunting big woods. The main food source in big timber is actually woody browse. Um, so timbered areas, areas with lots of stem density, thick areas, are where the deer are feeding. Um, it's also where they're bedding. A lot of times you don't get a lot of movement out of those areas. Uh, case in point, you got to look close, but if you get down near these small branches and trees, you can see all the little ends are, are bit off. See that? All along this trail, all the little branches are bit off. So they can't eat a tree, a big tree. So the smaller trees are where they're feeding. So cutovers that are, you know, like um, one to ten years old, that are real thick with lots of branches, that young growth, that's the main food source. That's like the cornfield of the big woods. We've talked about heavy cover and stem density being really important to bedding and for escape. But one, one thing we didn't bring up is there's another reason bucks like those low, thick, wet areas and those openings, and that's because those thick areas are also food. The bedding areas are also where they eat a lot of the time in big woods. There's not a lot to eat in open hardwoods. So those thick areas are the bedding, the food, or where a lot of times where everything's going on. So you can have big void areas where there's not much deer activity. And all the deer activity, bedding, eating, living, everything is around those thick areas. One thing that I've really noticed over the last few years with the influence of buckthorn coming in as an invasive species and really starting to take over a lot of the terrain I hunt on, buckthorn is actually a preferred browse for deer. They go to it like crazy. And I've seen them walk right through acorns and food plots to get to uh, buckthorn. It's uh, kind of amazing. They love those leaves, and those leaves stay on longer than the normal leaves of the native species. So that browse is around later into the season. I've noticed in the winter months when snow covers a lot of the browse, you see a lot more browsing shift to things they don't normally eat, like pine and cedar. And just driving around, you see cedar, cedar trees in yards with the browse line really high. And looking for deer density, looking for areas that got high browse lines is important. All right, so I'm out here in the bog, and uh, I've got a white pine right here. Not a huge white pine, but we've got some some tine scratchings on the tree. Looks like he rubbed on it a little bit here. And there's a branch that's been broken off and lying down at the bottom of it. And this tree's actually got a browse line, you know, from uh, deer head height uh, on down. They've knocked all the branches off and they eat white pine. It's a class two white tailed browse. They do get some nutrition from it. They eat the buds, they eat the tips of the branches, and uh, they'll actually knock the branches down with their hooves if they can to eat it. So what I'm seeing is, is the, the white pines in this area of the bog, you can see there's a couple small white pines over there that we're going to go take a look at. They've got a white tail browse line on them. You know, if you plant a, a white pine at your home, you're going to have branches almost all the way down touching the ground. None of these white pines do because the deer are eating them. It shows large numbers of deer repeatedly feeding in that area. If you go far enough north, you don't have acorns anymore. But where you do have acorns, they can be a huge draw and they can really be a bigger draw than any other food source when they're active. One of the things to keep in mind is that acorns produce at different times based on elevation of ground. 
so higher elevations drop a little different time than lower elevations. So that's one way you can keep onto acorns by starting where they start and moving to where they move like the deer do. Yeah, and if you look around here, this has all been cut. This is really the first oak, and this is the direction he's traveling. And that might be a good reason for that bet. I mean, the direction of travel. I'm sure he's coming up here and eating acorns. Staging right here and then moving on. Plus these oaks right here on the ridge top in the high ground are going to drop probably about a month before the ones down in the bottom swing. <laughs> high ground's dry. Good point. It'll drop. Now another thing about acorns is that not all trees are created the same. You might have two white oak acorn trees, but the deer will prefer the acorns off of one tree. It's like they can taste the nutrition out of that tree. So you'll see deer walk right past acorns to get to a certain tree. So look where the sign is and hunt the sign, not just the acorns. Your average guy makes the mistake of hunting right over the top of acorns. And that might not be the worst place to hunt, but you still have to take into consideration where are those deer bedding, how long is it going to take them to get to the food, and am I at the closest food to the bedding? So if you take an acorn flat and you look at bedding, it's going to be over here. You get to that far end of the acorn flat so that when they come in, they get to you in daylight. We can't forget that bedding takes precedence because they they live in their bedding areas in daylight and they only get so far from those beds in daylight. So that has to be your main concern when you're choosing your setup. If there's a lot of sign around an oak or something, it could be at night. It's still good sign. It's telling you the deer are coming there. Where are they coming from? Cut them off. We spoke a little bit earlier about rubs being important for communication whether it's to communicate with does, or it's to communicate with bucks, or it's to communicate, hey, this is mine. And when you see big rubs around food sources, that's a dominant buck saying, this is mine. And that's a good spot to hunt because that deer is going to be trying to get in there first. He's trying to guard it. He's trying to protect it from other deer. That's his food source. So heavy marking on food that's near bedding cover is a good place to hunt. If deer spend a lot of time in a food source, there should be poop there. There should be piles. And you can kind of determine when they're there based on that poop. Is the poop fresh? Is there poop that's there now, earlier, and even earlier, in different stages of decomposition? How big is the poop? Big bucks make big poop. Now, I want to make it clear, I don't have anything against baiting. There's disabled people that uh, may need bait to hunt. There's old people that may need bait to hunt. There's some people that that's their enjoyment is going out and sitting on a bucket, but they don't have the time or initiative to do the scouting. And I'm okay with that, as long as they do it in a legal manner and follow the rules. But with that said, there's some problems with baiting. Baiting makes deer nocturnal. It kind of sets you up in a trap. And what I mean by that is you might get young bucks or does and fawns that come running right in. And if you're hunting in an area where there's hardly any hunting pressure and the deer trust people, they might come waltzing right in. But if there's any kind of pressure and those, those deer feel threatened, you better believe mature bucks are going to circle that bait. They're going to smell downwind to see if you're there. They're going to cut your tracks to see if you went in there. And they're going to be real careful about going into bait. So that said, if you're baiting deer, you're going to have a long, hard road killing mature bucks on a regular basis. Unless you're cheating. It's a lot easier, a lot funner, and a lot better hunt. And something you're going to love a lot more in your heart if you hunt them by playing the chess game and outsmarting them by going out and figuring those deer out. In a lot of cases, a guy's going to sit on that bait, and he's going to sit there all day. It's kind of like a trap for him because he's just going to keep going back, and the reason he keeps going back is because, well, now there's a rub. Now i got a picture of this buck at night. Now it's getting earlier. One day he came in during daylight. 
and you get in this trap of following that routine and you just keep going back and forth to that bait pile and you'll never learn anything about hunting. You'll never learn anything about deer because all your fixation is going to be on that bait pile. Instead of going out and learning the forest, learning how the deer live and how they, how they work the woods and how they bed and how to manipulate that. There's a lot more pride taking in a hunt where you earned it, where you hunted that deer in a chess game one-on-one -on -one and beat him at his own game. Not with trickery, not with traps, but went in there, figured him out, hunted him, and had the deer you're hunting come in and you kill it. In that giant forest, you figure out that one deer and hunt him down and kill him. And when you accomplish that, you're a hunter. Sitting over a bait pile doesn't accomplish that. It might accomplish getting food on the table. It might accomplish you getting some deer. It might accomplish getting you out in the woods. And I'm okay with that. But if you want to become a better hunter and you want to feel great about your hunting and you really want to have pride in what you do, go learn how to hunt. Go out in the woods and hunt deer. Don't try to get them to hunt you. Thanks for watching the show. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit the subscribe button and check out Hunting Beast Gear. Gear for mobile hunters. See ya.